Hi everybody, you join me and Rada back in our no dig chemical free plot and we're continuing our theme on tomatoes. Now different people in different parts of the world will be at different stages of growth I guess. Um, for us our location is in the northern hemisphere, we're in Europe and we have a continental warm climate whereas the UK for example is uh, temperate oceanic I believe but the difference between us and the UK is that I'm more successful at growing tomatoes outside than um, the guys in the UK for example who you know grow them in polytonnels for argument's sake or any other structures and this is how we're getting on with ours so previous videos have shown you how we started off by germinating them and then we picked them out and put them in um, potted them on and then we put them into their final planting positions and this is some of those guys here so let's get a closer look ah, there we are at different stages of growth but these are our indeterminate uh, varieties uh, these are more like a tumbler over here they're called cocktails which you'll hear me mention quite a bit but yeah it's a tumbling tomato or vine tomato different stages of ripeness and it's an important time of the year, obviously, as these fruits begin to ripen. I have had a bit of an issue here. Uh, there's a good example where the, the actual vines or trusses have got so heavy that they've actually broken. But, you know, I'm outside here and if I get a bit of wind, that's not going to help. Um, so the key thing is whether you're outside or whether you are in a tunnel or in a greenhouse or even in a container, the first thing we're doing is we're making sure that we're pruning back the leaves from the base of the stems and we need to be doing a number of things. We want to be watering frequently because if we don't do that you could end up with blossom end rot. Um, I'll put up a picture so you get an idea of what it looks like but some people think that it's to do with the lack of calcium. Um, I tend to err on the caution on, on the cautious side and say infrequent watering and also lack of calcium. So this no dig bed that we started and again there's a video about how we did that on the channel as a mixture of sawdust starts off with cardboard then sawdust then um, compost but I've also mixed in some wood ash from the wood burner over the during the course of the winter which is a good form of calcium so that's a good thing to, to be doing. We'll get a bit more of a see the flowers and it's from these flowers that the fruits themselves set and at this particular point I'm what I'm looking to do is to begin feeding there's no point in me feeding them beforehand and and I'm looking to feed them with a high potassium content feed rather than nitrogen because if I had nitrogen this would just be nothing but green leaves and very little fruit and that's not really what I'm looking for for obvious reasons this particular variety here is quite a thick skinned um, tomato and it's really grown here mainly for making sauces. Um, whereas these ones here are um, more of your salad type variety. Now one thing you might want to think about, do you know how to actually harvest a tomato? Let's see if I can find one to show you. If you're looking at these guys here, what you want to be feeling for, there's a little nodule little bulge in the stem and what you do is you hold the tomato from the base and press against that little button if you like and as you push it and pull at the same time it never works when you want it to <laughs> why did that not work come on i'm trying to do it as gently as possible because i don't want to disturb there you go, out, out it comes. Get a bit of a close up of this green one here. And if you mm, see it carefully, you might not be able to pick that out, it's a bit. But as that tends to bend a little bit, that's the point that you want to be, it's there, pressing against. I think it didn't work so well on that one because that particular stem is a little bit dried out. There we go, I've got a fairly good sized tomato there. A few more here that we need to pick later on today. Okay, so 
We are beginning our harvest of these particular guys. Let's look at our bush for Now, if you're told, or you've been given advice that, you, oh, you don't need to stake bush tomatoes, trust me, you do. These have become so heavy that I've had to support them because the weight is just breaking the vines themselves. So I'm having to make crude ways of just supporting the weight the weight of the individual trusses because they are enormous. But here again, you see, you've got a lot of different stages of fruit ripeness. I've just picked this one. And there you can see where I press the button, if you like, it's come out quite well. Um, and in my pocket. But again, the same principle. I'm keeping it weeded, obviously. The other thing we need to make sure of is that we get plenty of airflow. And you'll need to do that in your polytunnels because otherwise you're going to start getting um, blight issues, which is obviously what you do not want. Certainly you're not. You'll be ripping the plants out straight away otherwise and you're destroying them. So that's air, air circulation is a great thing to have. So if you've got a tunnel, you want to be considering having the open open both ends, get that airflow going through. Obviously it's okay for me outside here because I don't have that issue. Other issues that you might get, the common or garden aphids, black fly or yellow fly. I'm just looking and I've just noticed that that guy there has got a touch. Well, I don't know if that's blossom end rot or an insect that's got in there. Blossom end rot, it would be rotten, as the word suggests, along the whole of that thing. So that, to me, I'm looking at that, something has got in there. Popping down there for now. Aphids, biggest issue for tomatoes, especially green aphids. Uh, you know, and black fly, green fly. Black so how fly. do you control aphids organically? Well, there's two ways of doing that. Some people say, oh, go and buy yourself some ladybugs or ladybirds. Um, <laughs> I'm really not keen on that idea because well, if everybody did it, would there be, is there actually enough ladybirds to go around? I don't think they are. And if you put them out in your garden, how do you get to stop them flying away? It's not as if they're trained. Sounds like a bit of a scan there. However, you can make an organic um, insecticidal soap. The exact recipe for that is on the channel. I put it on there a while ago. And it's basically a mix of using hand soap, which is made of fatty acids, not dish soap, which has got um, peroxides in it, a vegetable oil. Some people use neem oil. And in the case, if you want to get really um, after the hard skinned um, insects then you can add some baking soda which is bicarbonate of soda not baking powder mix the whole lot together spray it and it's very effective i had a problem with aphids on our um, plants in the front garden beginning of the season and the roses and it worked very well now i'm walking about because i was just have to take those tomatoes out of my pocket because i know i'll squash them um, because we're going to go on and look at the next group of tomatoes that we've got because this we're doing it in three different ways So the, we've just seen the first group that are beginning to ripen Now we're heading up so to we another, bed another set where I had the garlics planted and A recent video showed you how not only did I harvest them and that's well worth a view But also what I've done with the bed and, and basically I've transplanted tomatoes amongst other things in up against this frame and if you look carefully, I need to be removing these lower leaves and reattaching them as they've grown. They've only been in here a, a week and they're already going like crazy. So I need to start, like I say, putting back these leaves and training them up this particular frame. Um, again, we want the circulation of air. There's no flowers on here as such at the minute, but they won't take very long. We've got some more over that side uh, that we need to do um, and concentrate on. And what I have done, because it is quite nice, is um, I planted some purple basil. 
which is just coming through. So I put those in at the same day. Yeah, so it's about a week ago now. So they've germinated. Nothing nicer than having a basil leaf wrapped in one of the tomatoes you just picked off your vine. So as you can see there, I've got a lot of pruning to do and tying in. There's a beetle on there, I don't know what he is. But if you can make him out, but I think he's all right. I don't think he's doing any, any harm. So yeah, so that's the next stage. And then finally we move on to the final stage where I've repositioned some other tomatoes. So those tomatoes. tomatoes are in containers and I've repositioned them to the side of the, um, of the shed. And the idea is, is to do a comparison between um, tomatoes in pots as opposed to directly in the ground. So in our particular trial here, it's just, I'm just curious to see what kind of yields we get. Um, so we'll, come, we'll talk a bit more about that in just a second. But the principle is basically, I've got too many tomatoes, <laughs> so way too many, um, and I've just acquired loads from different places and whatever. So, you know, it, I like them. Let's just see what we get. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. Let's get over there and have a okay. proper look. The final way of growing tomatoes is doing them in pots, which means that if you have a balcony, you can grow your own tomatoes. So this variety is the same as the ones we've just been looking at up in the old um, bed where I grew the garlics. Um, but you can see that these are a little bit taller than, than those guys. And that's because I originally had them um, at the front of the house on the patio, but they were growing way too quickly. And so um, I brought them around here to the side of the shed. And I've done that for a number of reasons. One, because I wanted them to slow down a bit and get them out of the full sun, direct sun all day long. And looking over there, we are facing east, but we get the sun first thing in the morning. There's plenty of it. And then it rotates around up the top of the garage here, or the shed here rather, shed, office. And then comes back again at this time in the evening or well, it's late afternoon, it's about quarter past four. And so they are along here. Now, why have I put them there? Well, apart from what I've just said, but also last year, I grew tomatoes here last year and it was quite successful, but I didn't do them in pots. They went straight into the ground. Um, and also, just like the first bed of tomatoes, um, I popped some transplants of lettuce in. Now, for the next few days, they're gonna look pretty sorry for themselves and fed up with me. Um, they will come back as we've seen in the previous previous episodes so i can see that there's one job i need to finish off i've done them all done them with all the others and that's pruning down the lower leaves so we'll just take a quick look at that one you should be able to make out here that um i'm just taking out the lower leaves to encourage it to grow up and the thing is that these guys are as so I've already mentioned, they are um, they're vine tomatoes, they're indeterminates, and they're going to keep growing. And I'll put them here so that I can attach them to this frame behind if I need to. And I'm pretty sure I will. And um, give them some more air. If I don't give them air, they're not going to like it, and it will encourage things like blight. Now these are about three weeks younger than the others we've seen so far in the first in the first bed, um, where we've got the ripening ones. But they are they are they are also an indeterminate, but they're not the same type. So they're not like a sauce based tomato. They're a, they're, they're a kind of cherry, um, and over here they call them cocktails, cocktail tomatoes quite quaint isn't it now with these type of tomatoes you can also put them in a hanging basket so and they will literally just tumble out without any supports but they'll grow well um, no problem whatsoever um, so if you haven't got containers but you can get hold of some hanging baskets you want them fairly deep then you need to be putting them in there now there's one other thing that we need to be mindful of with growing anything in a container, but particularly tomatoes. So tomatoes are part of the same family as, or they're related, shall we say, distant cousins, I don't know, with eggplants or aubergines and also with potatoes. And 
when you're growing something in containers like these guys and also the potatoes that i've shown you recently they need to be fed because in the ground they're going to get more nutrients for obvious reasons but in in these pots it's not the case now the mixture in these pots is um it's a 50 50 mix so i've got homemade compost and i've also got some well rotted um cow manure so there's a quite a bit of feed in there already but i need to give them supplementary foods in particular when they're in these containers i mean i feed all the other tomatoes in directly in the ground but i pay more attention to these and what i'm looking for is as with the potatoes they're looking for um, a potassium rich feed rather than nitrogen if i give them nitrogen i'm going to get loads of green leaves but with all plants that produce fruits they really want potassium and so my form of potassium food is in the video that I made about how to make your own liquid plant foods for, for no money. And it's using the mixture where I've, um, you, I've dissolved um, sheep manure or sheep pellets into water to dissolve. And so that's a very efficient way of doing it. Now, I've got some flowers coming through. And there's a few fruits just developing and that tells me that it's the time now to start feeding these guys so as i've already mentioned in the video about feeding your plants i'll give them a good drink first and then i apply the feed and it will be one capful to the 10 liters um, that i mentioned in that in that um, feed video so different tomatoes can grow in different locations um, so we've started over there as a summary with the indeterminate ones that are going to be used for making sauces and then we've got the cherry type um, tomatoes that are also indeterminate that will just be growing where they like um, for your salads then we went into the bush tomatoes which are behind the that sumac tree there um, which are more again more for your salads and but you can use them for cooking and then we've got these guys here picking them fresh off the vines and either eating them straight away or putting them in the fridge for a later date i hope you found that video of interest so there is a playlist there and if you watch them all you'll see the beginnings so you start the video about how to grow them from seed how to transplant them um, or pot them on by picking out and then planting them into their final positions remembering that when we do that we plant right down to the hairs as far down as we possibly can but if you look carefully on that you can point you can probably see that there's still hairs on there so that i could get growth and in fact there's some already going from that well that's it about tomatoes the next one will be when we start harvesting them and how much we get in kilos but for now take care